Today I'm starting a project inspired by Chinese Ming Dynasty pottery. First I'm going to make a watercolor wash painting for the background and I'm going to choose between using all warm colors or all cool colors because I want my background to be nice and bright so I'm going with warm colors. A watercolor wash always starts out by spreading just water on the paper and oops I almost forgot to write my name before I started painting. But anyway, you spread just water on the paper first so that the colors blend and flow together. When you make your watercolor wash, you can blend colors randomly or create a design with more obvious lines and shapes. So that's up to you. When my watercolor wash is done, I'll put it in the drying rack. Now it's time to make a vase. So you can either fold your paper in half the long way to make a taller, thinner vase, or the short way to make a shorter, wider vase. And I'm going the shorter, wider route. I'm folding my paper in half, and I'm going to pay attention to which side of the folded paper is the side that opens up and the closed or creased side. I'm going to draw half a vase shape against the creased side of my folded paper, and I have a handout to help me decide what kind of vase design I want. And you can pick right from the handout, or you can make up your own design. So again, I'm drawing against the creased side. I'm only drawing half of the vase shape because when I cut and unfold the paper, I'll have a perfectly symmetrical vase that will be balanced on both sides. It's kind of like when you draw half a heart on a piece of paper and cut it out. Once again, I checked if I had drawn it against the creased side, because if you cut out your vase and it comes out in two pieces, that means you accidentally drew it against the open side. So you can always try again if you mess up, it's okay. My vase turned out great, it's symmetrical. So now it's time to add some designs to it. Now I have a placemat. I have a black one just so you can see my vase against it. You might be using a white placemat, but either way, you're using a placemat because we're going to add some designs with Sharpie. We don't want that to bleed through to the table. So Ming Dynasty pottery is famous for its white and blue decorations. The white came from the type of clay used, which was porcelain, and the blue came from cobalt ore, which was very rare, and it was imported from the Middle East. Now, of course, we're using blue markers to make our designs. Some designs on Ming pottery told stories and showed images like dragons or animals or people, while others were purely decorative with just patterns. So you can choose if your face will include pictures of people or animals or things, or if you just want abstract designs. Uh, I just want you to think about lines, shapes, textures, patterns. My design is gonna represent Lake Superior with the waves up here. And then I'm going to draw some grass with wildflowers on the bottom. So I have a combination of some patterns and then some things that are representational of real things. Now, if you write your name on the back of your vase, remember to do it with a pencil and not a Sharpie because the Sharpie is going to show through to the other side. Now I'm going to make a shadow for my vase, a little extra something special for our collage. To do that, I'm tracing my vase onto a black piece of paper and then I'll cut out the traced shape. 
and this will go behind my vase when I collage it onto my watercolor background. Now my background is dry, so I'll show you how I collage the vase and the shadow on top. Um, so I'm placing the shadow behind my vase so that a little bit of it sticks out and you can trim it if you want, like I am. I just want it to be perfect. And then when I collage it like that, with a little bit of the shadow sticking out from behind the vase, it will give um, my vase some depth and make it really stand out against the back background. And make sure when you glue it on, it's uh, towards the bottom because we're gonna be drawing something in our vase and we need room for that. So glue your vase with the shadow towards the bottom of the paper.